I want to tell you about a way of multiplying two very special types of polynomials. And I want you to think about it as really like cooking. Maybe some of you actually do some barbecuing. I know that I do. For example, you can wrap it up nicely. Okay, you have your food product here, nice and tight. And then what you can do is you can take your flame and you don't want too hot of a flame and you just want just enough so you can really, and don't burn your hands while you're doing this. Most people actually put this on a grill, you see? And you do this, and you do this for about 45 minutes. And then when you're all done, it's like these cooking shows, we sort of fast forward. Now, I already, I already have one prepared. And what you have here is really a foil. That's exactly what's going on here. And what foil, I think about foil, first, outside, inside, and last. So first, if you open, it's very hot by the way. Ooh, can you see the steam coming off this? The first, if you open it up, see, and so there is the head. So there's the first. And then you've got the outside, you've got the inside, and then if you open it up, you've got the last. And there you have your dinner. And there you have the method of multiplying two binomials together, and that is the method known as foiling. Let me show you this first, outside, inside, last with examples. It's a great way to remember, and a delicious meal, by the way, which will feed, that will feed about a family of two, or not. Now, suppose you're looking at 3x plus 1, and I want to multiply that by 2x minus 3. This little jingle of foil will tell me exactly how to multiply them together. See, remember, the strategy is clear. The strategy is, I take this blob and multiply it by the 2x, take the blob and multiply it by the minus 3. Once I do that, I've got to take this 2x and distribute it through, and take the minus 3 and distribute it through. Now, a way of doing all that at once is just recognizing that every term here has to be hit with every term here. And if I do that in a systematic way, FOIL, F stands for first. So I take the first times the first. I hit those two terms together. When I do that, I would see 3x times 2x, and I'd see 6x squared. Then I do the outside terms. So I multiply this by this, the two outside terms. I did the first terms together. Now I do the outside terms. That gives me a net gain of minus 9x, because 3x times minus 3 is minus 9x. Then I do the inside terms. So I add 1 times 2x, which is just 2x. And the last terms, which is uh, minus 3 times 1, which is negative 3. Notice I have four terms, which is good, because I got 2 here and 2 here. I should have a total of 2 times 2, which is 4. I can simplify 6x squared minus 7x minus 3. So there you have an easy way of multiplying these two binomials by themselves by just using the FOIL method. Let me show you some more examples. Even if you've got lots of variables, this still works, as long as you just have two terms here and two terms here. So here are two binomials, and now let's multiply them together. First times the first. That's going to be 15x squared. Then the, inside, then the outside terms. It doesn't make a difference, actually. If you spell it wrong, if you're slightly dyslexic like me, and you spell this as file, file, it will still work if you do the first, then inside, then outside, then last. Doesn't make a difference because multiplication is commutative. I mean, addition is commutative. But let's do it the way it's spelled. So outsides. So 5x times negative 5y. Be so careful here. That negative sign makes me a negative. 5 times 5 is 25. And I've got an x and I've got a y. So it's minus 25xy. My inside terms produces a negative 6xy. And my last times the last negative times a negative is a positive. So I've got a plus 10y times y is y squared. Again, four terms, perfect. And I can combine the like terms. And I see 15x squared. And this gives me a net gain of minus 31xy and then plus 10y squared. So then you can see how to, how to actually multiply these people out using the FOIL method. Uh, let's, try, let's try one. It's sort of a famous one. There's a famous one. You'll see this a lot in your life in various guises, not exactly like this. Let's try this one. So the FOIL method, here we go. So the first times the first is x squared. Outside terms are plus xy. Inside term, notice the minus sign, is minus xy. 
And last times the last negative times a positive is a negative y squared. This produces x squared, but notice the inside and the outside terms cancel. They add to give 0. They drop out. I'm left with minus y squared. So in fact, what I see here is the difference, the difference of two perfect squares. So if you have x squared minus y squared, you can always factor it as x plus y times x minus y. Boy, you will use this a million times in this course. So it's sort of fun to see it happening here, right here now, and, and vice versa. If you want to multiply two things that look like this and they're the same except for a difference in sign, you know it's going to have this general shape, the difference of squares. How about one um, exotic example, x squared plus yz. Look at lots of variables here, x squared minus yz. But still, there are only two terms here, only two terms here that I'm adding or subtracting. Should be a total of four, and I can use the FOIL method to see exactly what they are. First times the first, x squared squared, so that's x to the fourth. Then the, in, then the outside terms, minus x squared yz. Inside terms, plus x squared yz. And then the last is a negative y squared z squared. And again, notice that these cancel. And you look back and say, oh, yeah, they should have canceled because these are the same except for a difference in sign. So these terms do cancel like before. And I see x to the fourth minus y squared z squared. Again, I see the difference of two perfect squares. This is x squared squared, and this is yz all squared. So again, the FOIL method is a really easy way of multiplying out these people, things of this sort, when you've got two people here and two people here. Just do the first times the first, the outside times the outside, the inside times the inside, the last times the last. What you're doing, though, in essence, is just taking this blop, distributing it once, and then distributing these things back again. No problem. I'll see you up at the next lecture.